Some web applications use XML to transmit data between browser and web server. In such scenario, if the application is not performing proper actions on the received XML document, then an attacker can inject custom entities into the XML document to exploit XML external entity injection and retrieve sensitive file systems from the application web server such as etc password file. During this video, we'll look at this scenario in action. For the purpose of this exercise, we use a lab from Web Security Academy and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. To solve this lab, we need to exploit the XML external entity injection to retrieve the contents of etc password file. Okay, let's go ahead and start the lab by clicking on access the lab. The application homepage contains a list of products. Let's choose one of these products by clicking on view details. At the bottom of the product page, we see the check stock function, which allows users to check the available items of the product in a particular store. First, let's turn on Burp Intercept, then choose a store from drop down menu and click on check stock. In the body of the HTTP post request, we see the application is using XML for sending data to the application server. The first line is used for XML declaration and it contains the XML version and the character encoding. As we see, there are two XML elements, one for product ID and the other one for the store ID. Let's forward this request. The application returns the number of available items in the selected store. Since the application is using XML to transmit data between web server and web browser, we are interested to see if we can modify the XML in the check stock HTTP request to perform XML external entity injection attack and retrieve file systems from the application server. In the payload, we need to define an external entity and set its value to the URL or path to the file system that we want to access on the application web server. In XML, we can define external entities using doc type element. The doc type element should be placed at the start of the XML document after the XML declaration and the external entity should be defined inside the doc type element. We can use this payload to exploit XML external entity injection in this application. In the first line, we have defined an external entity inside the doc type element. The doc type element is started with the doc type keyword following with the element name. Then inside doc type element, another element is used to define an external entity starting with entity keyword following with the name of the entity and system keyword. The system keyword is used to declare that this is an external entity. And the last part is the path to the file containing the contents of the entity, which in our payload is the path to etc password file on the application server. In the next line, for the product ID element, we have used the reference to the external entity. So in our payload, we have defined an external entity called XXE, and we have set its value to be loaded from etc password file. If the web application is not using any defensive mechanism against XML external entity injection, then when the application receives an HTTP request containing our payload, it should return the contents of etc password file in the application response. So let's go ahead and check if the application is actually vulnerable and we can retrieve the etc password file. Back in the web browser, let's once again choose the city from drop down menu and click on check stock. Now we need to inject our payload in the XML within the HTTP request. So we go to the request body and add the doc type element after the XML declaration element. Then we need to replace the value of product ID element with the reference to the external entity. Now that we have injected our payload, we can go ahead and forward this request. The application returns an error message, invalid product ID following by the contents of the etc password file. As we see, we could successfully exploit the XML external entity injection and retrieve etc password file from the application web server. In the web browser, we see the message that we have solved the lab. During this video, we saw how an attacker could exploit XML external entity injection using the custom external entities to retrieve files from the application web server. 
If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like and if you want to see more videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel as I upload new videos every week.